Welcome everyone to our uh, West High Incoming Freshman Registration um, webinar. We're excited to have you tonight and we're excited. This is an exciting time of year as we prepare and, and greet a new freshman class coming into West High. Um, we'll share a lot of information with you tonight um, and we'll have time at the end for questions uh, as we go along. So this is our schedule for the week. Um, we were yesterday, we we're at Northwest meeting with all the eighth graders. Um, they have a lot of energy, which is exciting. Um, we went through a lot of what we're gonna go through tonight with you. Tomorrow, we'll be back at Northwest uh, in the library. So if, if your son or daughter has specific questions, we encourage them to come ask us uh, about those specific questions. We'll be able to answer those for them tomorrow. And then Friday, we'll go back again to um, check their registration and get their, get their registration and requests into Infinite Campus. So it's a busy week. Um, and so we encourage you to um, ask questions um, as we go along um, and go from there. Um, and now um, we'll introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Paul Breitbach. I work with all the students A through D, last names. My name is Kelly Bergman. I work with students with last names E through J. My name is Greg Yoder. I work with students with the last names K through Q. And my name is Kay DeLeo, and I work with students, last names R through Z. And just a little bit about what you can expect from our counseling staff as your student enters high school. Um, we just listed a few things here. Obviously, it encompasses a lot more than what we have listed. But as you can see, we help with the course registration each year and planning um, for the four-year plan while your student's in high school. And, and then while they're there, they'll receive a schedule. And once in a while, they may you know, want to make adjustments to their schedule or have questions about the schedule. So we also handle all the scheduling requests. Um, then I know it's it's hard to think, but the four years does go by fast. So sooner than later, you'll be uh, talking about college with your student and we can help with some research for college, some college planning, any kind of questions, or any guidance that they or you would like with the college, we do um, help with that as well. And along with that, um, or some scholarships so we can help you uh, research scholarships out there. Lastly, the last two things, um, social emotional, if your student um, is having a bad day or they have some social emotional concerns, we do um, help with, with social emotional concerns. We also have some student family advocates um, in our office so they can help with that as well. And then lastly, obviously academic concerns. So at any time, if your student is struggling academically, or if they need anything with their academics, so we would be the place to go. I kind of refer to our, our office as the information booth. So if you don't know where to go or who to ask, um, just give us a call. And if we don't know the answer, we'll direct you to the right, right place. So a few things that are different, and this is what we really stressed with your, with your students yesterday when we presented to them. There are a few things different in how High school then junior high and probably the the biggest difference our grades really do matter now so the minute um, they finish that first trimester they are creating a transcript and those grades will stay on the transcript um, and they won't you know be removed so um, we really stressed to them that they start off on a good foot and that freshman year is very important as far as grades go um, another difference would be the core courses, they do have to pass all three trimesters of the core course. So if they do fail a core course or a trimester of a core course, they will have to retake that. It is a graduation requirement, so they will retake um, anything that's a graduation requirement. Another thing, credits are required in certain areas to meet graduation and college admission requirements. So we really, um, we're here to help you make that plan out for your student to make sure, and it's our job to make sure that they stay along and progress towards graduation. Um, we pride ourselves in, in having our students graduate from high school. So, um, you know, you never, can, you never can reach out to us too much. So just feel free to contact us anytime if you have questions um, regarding the credits or courses or any kind of academic concerns. The final trimester grade in each course counts towards a student's overall grade point average. So each trimester, the grade point average build together and they obviously um, accumulate. So 
the cumulative GPA is what we look at and what colleges look at when they're deciding their admission um, for students. So once again, um, you know, we really stress to students each trimester is important to do as well as they can. And this is one of the reasons we want all those doors open for your student as they um, leave us from high school and, you know, seek whatever opportunity they're looking to seek. And lastly, probably the biggest difference for junior high students is we only have seven periods in our school day. In junior high, they have eight. We run a little longer school, uh, class periods each, each day. So we will only have seven periods. So they could take up to seven classes per day. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about graduation requirements. So you can see in the bottom corner that students need 310 credits to graduate. Now that seems like a lot, um, but for every class, they earn five credits per trimester. So for example, when your child takes English 9 their freshman year, for each trimester, they will earn five credits. So English 9 for the year is worth 15 credits. Um, most of our freshmen take anywhere from 80 to 105 credits each year. Um, so those credits add up very, very quickly. You'll also see um, that for English, you need four years to graduate. The other core classes, social studies, math, and science, we require three years. For PE, you need to account for one trimester of PE each year you're in high school. You just need one trimester of health, one trimester of a personal finance, which is typically done in the junior or senior year, and then 85 credits of electives. Um, our graduation requirements mirror college requirements. Um, Although we do recommend that students who are planning on going to college that they do take four years of each of those core classes. Um, in addition to world language, you'll see that it is not a graduation requirement, but it is a requirement for admission into college. So colleges require at least two years of the same world language for admission. So we really like to see all of our students take at least two years of the same world language so that they have plenty of doors open to them when they, when they leave West High. Um, so this is um, just a copy of what the registration form looks like. Hopefully you've seen this green registration form and your child has brought this home to you. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what it looks like. Um, so there's two pages front and back. On the front, on the top, you'll see a course worksheet. So this is really helpful in kind of making a mock or a, or a sample schedule. So as you go through, hopefully you can, hopefully you can hear me. I'm getting lots of messages that you lost sound. Okay, um, so hopefully as you go through, you're able to then enter those courses into that course worksheet to see how everything might fit in. On the bottom half are required courses. So you'll see in each one of those boxes, students are required to choose one class within each one of those categories. And then on the back are electives. So the top half is year long electives and then the bottom half are trimester electives. Um, on that registration form, you're going to see a couple different terms, and so we just want to make sure that all parents are aware of the difference between a traditional and honors and an AP course. Um, so an honors course is going to move at a little bit of a faster pace. It's going to cover more, more material, and they might have additional work requirements. They're really designed for students who are either really excited about a subject area or really want to take the AP level or advanced placement level of a certain course. So if students are looking for a challenge or they want to move at a faster pace, honors is a great option for them. Advanced placement or AP um, is, is a college level course. So when they're in high school, they're able to take this class all year and it prepares them for one large big exam in May. Based on a student's score on that exam in May, they may be able to earn college credit. So the score on the exam in May is completely independent of the grade that they earn in the class. So it's a great way for students to challenge themselves um, and hopefully for you guys to save a little bit of extra money on some of those core classes that students would have to take when they go to college. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna just talk briefly about some very common questions that come up uh, when it comes to you know registering for courses. So um, English 9 Honors is the first one. Um, as you go through registration, your child goes through registration, the only option available to them when they get first get started is English 9. Um, 
We do have an option sometime during the first trimester, their English 9 teacher will actually bring up the topic of English 9 honors to kind of lay out the expectations of what, an, what, what the honors course is versus the English 9 course. Um, and they will kind of share that information out, um, give students the opportunity that if they want the additional rigor uh, attached to an honors course, that is something that they could sign on for. Um, but at this point, that is not something that the students will sign up for. They will sign up for that during the first trimester of their ninth grade year. So really, there's the only thing they have to do at this point when signing up for courses is just to indicate English 9. But yes, the Honors, 9, on, Honors English 9 course does exist. Uh, it's just more of a second and third trimester option. Um, the second thing I have highlighted there is the AP Human Geography versus American Studies. When it comes to social studies, students have a choice. Um, AP Human Geography actually fulfills a world history requirement. So in order to graduate, students have to have one year of world history. Um, so that is an option for students who maybe aren't real sure of, you know, maybe they'd like the additional rigor, they like social studies as an option. Um, An AP Human Geography is just a, a very good viable option. It's a good introductory course into the world of advanced placement. Um, and if students don't really want the extra rigor involved with that, they can always sign on to take American Studies as a ninth grader. Um, so again, that would be the other graduation requirement within Social Studies, which would be um, to make sure that um, students will have to have a, a year of American studies. Um, for students that opt to take AP Human Geography as a sophomore, they can typically take AP US History if they so choose. Um, the third thing I've listed there is Performance PE. Um, there's, we actually offer four different options for students um, within the PE department. Um, specifically when it comes to Performance PE, a lot of students who are involved in athletics uh, choose to take performance PE specifically in the trimester before their, their sport. So for example, if a student knows they want to run track in high school, um, we would probably recommend that they plan to take um, performance PE one during their second trimester. Um, the only, uh, similarly, if a student wants to take, wants to be part of basketball during the second trimester, they might choose to take performance PE1 during the first trimester. Um, the only exception to that rule is the football team um, really likes students to sign on and take performance PE1 during the first trimester of their high school, of their, of their first year. So um, that's, that's kind of in a nutshell what, what happens with the performance PE. Once students take performance one, they can opt to take performance two and during a, a, another trimester, if they so choose, students only are required to have one trimester of PE uh, per year. So while they can sign on for all three trimesters, they only have to sign on for one. And we have, I believe, three other option, options for PE courses. One of them is team and recreational activities. Students learn the team sports, they play the games types of things. We also have a lifestyle fitness, which is much more of a yoga aerobics um, stretching type thing, just uh, so that that's that other option. Um, also, underneath that, we have early bird health and PE academic waiver. So um, we actually have kids have three options for health classes they could choose from. There's the traditional standard curriculum of health. Um, there is also another elective that fulfills the health requirement called personal wellness and fitness. And there is also another class called Current and Critical Issues in Health, and all three of those fulfill the health requirement. For students who opt to take seven year-long courses, so maybe they're in English, Math, Science, Social Studies, a language plus band and choir, uh, they're going to have a full schedule. Um, they can, in that situation, opt to take early bird health, uh, and that is offered during the third trimester. So students can actually take that class. I believe it starts at about 7.30 in the morning, goes for you know, about an hour, maybe I'm, I might be a little early on that, it might be about 7.45, um, but students take that class, that, that way they can fulfill that health requirement. The vast majority of our students take health as ninth graders. 
Um, the other thing I didn't mention yet was the PE academic waiver. So in that scenario that I just kind of brought up where a student takes English, math, science, social studies, language, and then a couple other courses, year long courses, they could sign on then for a, an academic waiver. And that just means that their schedule is full. Uh, they don't have an opportunity to take physical education during the year. Um, so that that is an option as well. And that's that's known as the PE academic waiver. Uh, the next thing I have listed there uh, is orchestra band combo. I know in junior high, some students were uh, active in maybe they have an A and a B day. Um, our one opportunity that students could do that is if, if they wanted to be in both orchestra and band. Um, when students go to sign up for the course, they just kind of put down band slash orchestra and it pops up and they can make that selection. And then that's the only opportunity where kids can do both during the same uh, period uh, because our choir is, is at a totally different time of the day that's not really an option for kids to be able to do both choir and band or choir and orchestra I can't talk both choir and band or choir and orchestra um, and then the other thing that comes up a lot of times um, every year we you know as students transition from junior high to high school I know there's a lot of meetings that take place for students who have IEPs and or 504 plans um, please rest assured that we get um, the junior high always forwards 504 plans on to us, um, and we're happy to help navigate that process for families, students and families, um, and case managers are really good at handing off IEPs and accommodation plans to case managers at the, at the high school level as well. So just, just a couple things for you guys to um, kind of be aware of as we go through. Um, so those are the, the pre, all the things that we specifically wanted to talk to. Um, I know there are also some other questions about uh, that are kind of popping up in the, the Q&A. Um, Greg, can you speak Yoder, about can the world I language? Address, yep, can we address world language really quick? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, we're, getting, we're getting lots of good questions about world language. We actually talked about this with your students, but it didn't make it onto this one. So um, for world language, remember it is not required for graduation, but it is required for college admissions. The world language that they're currently in this year does count as high school credit. So for example, if they are in French one or Spanish one right now, that counts as a year of high school credit and counts as a year of credit um, towards those two years that they need. Um, if they're doing really well right now, we recommend that they go to the second level. We also have an honors of that. So they could do Spanish two honors or French two honors. Or if you feel like maybe they don't have the foundational skills yet, they can repeat the course at the high school level if they want to. Um, we do recommend at least two years. Four years is ideal. A lot of colleges require that if you don't fulfill a four-year requirement of world language in high school, that you need to take additional um, coursework at the university level. Um, so if they're doing well in world language, we really like to see them do four years if they can. There was a question in the chat and the question answer regarding can they not take band and choir? Yes, they can take band and choir. We address the band orchestra because that is a situation where they can just do band and orchestra in the same class period. So it wouldn't take two of the seven periods. Um, you'll notice on your student's registration form at the top, there's that worksheet. We kind of have that so you can plug in the different courses and you can see how the seven periods um, will fill it out the schedule and um, and then you'll see where the open slots are. So if you do ban and choir, that's possible. It just would take two of the seven slots. One of the questions that came up was, does honors affect GPA? Um, good question. So we currently are running a weighted four point scale. And what that means is that students who take um, AP courses, they get a, they can get a bump in their GPA. And so if, if they happen to get an A in an AP course, that counts for five GPA points. Honors classes do not, uh, are not on a weighted scale. So that's just the traditional four point scale.
the world language or anything. If, if your students in math and algebra and they're gonna retake right. algebra one as a freshman or um, the world language, if you take Spanish one in junior high and you take Spanish one again as a freshman, that would just count as one year, okay? So the math would just be one year because it's the same course and same thing, Spanish one would just be one year. They would have to get to Spanish two to complete the two years. So it's more the level than it is how many years they take. They have to take two different classes. Now, I just wanted to bring up one thing as we, we kind of showed many of the kids when we were doing our uh, things in the little theater yesterday um, about when they go to enter the request into Infinite Campus. If you happen to be helping with your child with the process of entering the requests, all they need, all they have to do is enter their requests in for their ninth grade year. Um, they can go in and start adding some things in for their sophomore, junior, senior year. It's not required. Um, when they go to hit submit or save, um, it will give them some error messages and that's fine. It will still save their, their requests into the system. So uh, we will ensure that everybody gets all the right courses that they were requesting um, when we are there on, uh, specifically we can answer specific questions tomorrow when we're at school, but then we will also be there on Friday to make sure everything gets processed correctly. Um, there's also a question about changing registration. Once after this week, if somebody wants to change something, we would just encourage a uh, student and or parent to reach out to us as counselor and just send us notification about what changes you'd like to see made. Um, because what will happen is we'll actually convert all those into requests for next year or so. Um, you know, after after we're done at the junior high this week, we're going to have to be the ones that enter those requests. We would really love for um, students and their families to be involved in the registration process. So we're there tomorrow and happy to help answer questions. We'd really like you to get familiar with Infinite Campus and how you register for courses in there because it is a program that students will year, use all four years as they register for courses um, throughout their time at West. The other great thing in Infinite Campus on the student side, so the student will need to log into their account to be able to register for their coursework. But there is a little tab at the top when you get into the academic plan where you can type in a course. So you can type in, for example, I see something about lifestyle fitness. You can type in lifestyle fitness and it'll give you the course description for any class. So if you're curious what you do in child development or what you do in futures, you can go into Infinite Campus and then actually explore those, those course descriptions. There are several questions about health. Um, health is a required class. Um, now, parents, families can waive that health requirement if for religious reasons, they, they feel that the, they wanna cover that content at home and they just need to contact us in the, in the guidance office um, to get that form. And most ninth graders take health, but some students, um, if they have a full schedule and they don't wanna do the early bird health, they can certainly take it you know, sophomore, junior, senior year, but typically they take it freshman year. There's also a question in the Q&A about eighth grade courses. Those eighth grade courses will go onto a student's transcript, but it will not, they will not factor into GPA. Um, that's so they are reflected that the student takes them, but they again do not get uh, reflected in the GPA. Uh, another program about the or question about the program of studies. The program of studies can be found on the West High Guidance website. It, uh, there's a navigational bar on the right of the page that has a link to 
um, next year's program of studies. Um, so that's that's the easiest way to um, access that that document. Um, I am going to put our. Go ahead, Mr. Weibach. A uh, question about PES. PES is every day for one trimester, and that fulfills their requirement for the whole year. And I know that's different than than the way it is in, in junior high, but it's just one trimester class. They go every day at, at the high school level. Question about study halls. Students don't have to sign up for study halls. If they don't sign up for seven courses, uh, they will be assigned a study hall. Uh, I wouldn't recommend, just from past experience, um, I wouldn't recommend more than one study hall uh, in any given trimester. Um, things can get a little bit boring. Uh, So Mr. Yoder, if you'd like to go to the next screen, um, we have all of our, our email addresses are listed as well as our phone number. So I think our ultimate goal in, in going back tomorrow is giving your students an opportunity to sit down with one of us one-on-one. -on -one, and we can answer a lot of their specific questions about you know, which trimester should they take something or what is a particular course. Um, so we're really hoping to be able to spend some quality one-on-one -on -one time with them to help them plan and answer their questions. And then on Friday, we will be going back again. Uh, we'll be meeting with every student to make sure that the courses that they signed up for on their green registration form are entered correctly into Infinite Campus. So we will have two more opportunities to, to see your kids. Um, if you do have any questions in the meantime, feel free to reach out to us. Um, your child is assigned to a specific counselor, so we'd love to hear from you if there's anything specific to your child that you just have more additional questions on. And I, I'd also like to note that um, in the fall and August, we will have a freshman orientation. So they will learn more about West High and be able to come before school starts and see the layout of the building and also meet their teachers. And we typically have a um, freshman and new student parent orientation too. So we'll be discussing more detailed things about how West High works and that kind of thing. This is, is basically just a registration webinar. There are a couple of questions about geometry honors. Um, it does not require teacher recommendation, although we encourage uh, students to talk to their current math teachers or, and all their teachers to get recommendations. And a student could take geometry as a uh, as a freshman and still get to BC Calc. Um, the, the majority of our students who take geometry as a freshman though do take geometry honors. Oops. All right, I think at this point, I'm gonna you know, stop our recording. And if, as you guys have more questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us as counselors. We want to, to do what we can to answer as, as many of them as we possibly can. Um, I'd like to thank you for your time this evening. And uh, we look forward to seeing your students the next couple of days at, at school and, and also registering um, them for their classes and seeing them in the fall. So. Thank you very much and you guys have a great evening.